You have these, no, this is the e-book, right? Yes. Only on uh, Apple Books. Correct. Brand new. Brand new. Just released. On Apple Books. Oh, great. All right. You and Harry and... Me, Harry Lorenzi, and another colleague named Luis Parker. Luis Parker is a German name. Uh, another, another Morse Parker is good enough. So. <laughs> <laughs> Morse Parker is tall. Luis Parker is not uh, so yes. tall. Yes. So we give you the credit. Just they have a, a country music band, Parker and Morse Parker. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, it's not, they got to get the leader horses. They're Germans, remember? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get ready for October. Man. Yes. Okay. Uh, yesterday we will have talked about our work introducing wild fruits uh, to cultivation and uh, I explained it, uh, how we did it, uh, I, said, I talked about an example of a Campomanesia species, Campomanesia hirsuta, and told the, the story, all the steps, how to get these plants to cultivation. But today uh, we will focus on several interesting plants that for one reason or another they have potential to be cultivated by farmers or nurserymen or even fruit collectors. So, um, as it is in the book, uh, we will start uh, in alphabetical order each family. The first family will be Anonaceae. That's the family that was focus, focused in depth by Antonio Moschbacher. So I ch have chosen only two species to talk about. Next. Yes, the, the first one that I would like to talk about is the, the left page. Anona Salzmaniae, and you can enlarge the fruit photo, please. Yes, this is uh, perhaps the best tasting, tasting of all wild Brazilian Anonas. Uh, as you can see, this is a wild fruit. Um, it has um, pulp, very melting, uh, a great trouble in Anonas. Uh, in general, even the cultivated ones, is that sometimes they, they have grains uh, like, like sand in your mouth. People say it's grainy taste. But this one is absolutely grainless. It's very smooth in your mouth and it separates quite easily from the seed. So you just put it in your mouth and you spit easily the, all the seeds. And uh, another good thing is when this plant is cultivated and hand pollinated, it produces less seeds. And the taste is really excellent. They taste like a mixture um, between sugar apple, so very sweet, with a, an apple touch. It's really delicious. And uh, some people in Florida are already fruiting it, and I think soon in Hawaii we will have them uh, cultivated too. It's a species growing very close to the sea, so they can take salt spray without any trouble. And uh, the leaves are very thick, it's quite resistant, very easy to grow. Next. Next species. Oops. He's opening the book again. Oh, oops. Oh, next page. Yes, the second one I would like to talk about is Anona spinescens. This orange one uh, that I would like here to enlarge the fruit. Uh, this Anona is really amazing because you can even, it has a big size and you can even eat the skin. The skin is very, very thin, uh, like, like a Suriname cherry skin. It's completely edible. And uh, 
the texture as well as the taste resembles uh, very well pumpkin pie. It's really delicious, very rich in carotenes. That's um, a very good uh, substance for, for health. And uh, it has a good number of seeds, not so many as you can see in the picture. Uh, all parts of the fruit uh, are edible except the seeds. And in Brazil, uh, several people are, are cultivating it. Uh, as my colleague Antonio Moschbach uh, remarked, it's quite easy uh, to cultivation. It can stand any kind of condition, cold conditions, very hot conditions, dryness, and the flu and flood. Because in its natural biotope, it grows just beside some rivers, a very big river, Rio San Francisco, that uh, parts of year it's very dry and parts of, of year it's overflood. So the plant is very easy to grow. And uh, the chefs in Brazil, they use the texture and they, they, they take the, the seeds off through a, I think the word is thief, right? Uh, to get the seeds out and mix them with some kind of spices and make uh, patty pastes that you can use with bread and other recipes. It's very delicious. Next. Now we go to another family. We go to the legume family. Uh, the the Fabaceae is the family section Mimosoidae. Next slide. I have focused on some species. The first one is Inga cinnamomia. As you can see, the fruit is huge. Every square is one centimeter. Um, please enlarge the, the fruit. So, the, the fruit has several sections and, and pulp uh, around the, the seed. This is from Amazon region and it is one of the, the two most widely grown and sold in markets in the, the cities in Brazilian Amazon region, uh, Belen and Manaus. In both cities this fruit is very popular in markets. Um, I would like to show the flower Please enlarge the flower. The flower is what has given it its scientific name, Inga cinnamomia. Cinnamomia comes, of course, from cinnamon, because not the fruit, but the flowers, they have exactly the scent of cinnamon. So if you have this plant in your farm, it will give an excellent shade, as well as a beautiful, uh, very pleasant uh, smell at night of cinnamon. And the flowers are big. And the tree, of course, is big of this one, as you can see. Uh, please enlarge the, the photograph of the tree. This is a tree in the wild. Uh, it's about six to eight meters in the wild. But in my farm, I keep it with three, three or four meters maximum because I pruned the top, I keep pruning the, the top. I don't want it that big. And next one is a dwarf species. We, we came from a big species of Inga to a dwarf one. Please the, show the, the fruit. The fruits are 10 centimeters, they are not so big. It's not so spectacular regarding the fruit, but it's a plant that's fantastic for pot cultivation. So many uh, fruit collectors in Brazil now live in apartments, small apartments, and they, they only have a small veranda to cultivate plants. And they look for plants that they can fruit in pots. And this is the best thing for pot growing. Let's show the tree. Yeah, the tree is very small. This is uh, a young tree, as that they get old, you prune, prune on the top, and it, it will get very, very bushy and beautiful in shape. And I want to show the flower. 
and the leaves. The leaves are very beautiful, they are bullet. And uh, when the leaves are new, they are not green, they are brownish red. And the flowers are yellow and very big. And uh, Oscar, that's just behind me, uh, when he visited Brazil, we have met this in the forest, in the wild. At that time, how many years was it? Uh, seven, eight years ago. Seven, eight years ago. Nobody in the world uh, cultivated this species. It's very, very rare in nature. It's threatened of extinction. It was in the red list. And we brought it to cultivation. And first time we had the good luck of Oscar to find it in the forest. But without fruits and we did all the job fertilizing, keep. And uh, there was a particularly, there was much trouble because there are, there was some uh, small monkeys, mammosets. They eat all the fruits and it was a pain in the ass to <laughs> fight with them. <laughs> Next. Okay, the, the last Inga I would like to talk about is Inga Edulis. Yeah, this one. They call meter Inga because Inga de Metro, because fruits can be as big as one meter long. This is a very commercial fruit in Brazilian Amazon. Only two species of Inga are sold commercially in, in markets in Brazil. The, the first species I, sh I showed you, Inga cinnamomia, and this one, this one tastes really excellent. It's the best tasting one. Um, the seed separated very easily from the pulp and it melts in your mouth. They, it's exactly the feeling as the popular name in English for this fruit, ice cream beans because it's like vanilla ice cream in, in your mouth. It's totally sweet, not, not a single thing of acidity. And people love it in Brazil, especially in the Amazon region. And very easy to grow this species. This comes from seed to fruit in yeah. three, four years maximum. Uh, the first one, Cinnamomia, takes longer, it takes five years or more. So, this is a very good crop, promising one. Next. We'll change family now. This looks like Fewile, but uh, he can confirm. I think it's Fewile, Inga Fewile. This is not from Brazil, this is from Peru. Yeah. Yeah, now we go to the Lecitidaceae family. It's the monkey pot family as well as the cut nut family. Next slide. I will show the most pro promising one in, in Brazil for cultivation. It's uh, Lassitips pisoni, it's the one in, in the right. It's uh, like the monkey pot from Peru that you have in Hawaii. In Hawaii you, you have Lassitis sapugayo from Peru. Uh, but the one you have in Hawaii is a huge tree, it's a monster. It's very hard to cultivate and harvest the fruits. But this species uh, is much smaller and particularly the, the variety we have selected in our farm stays small, three, four, five meters maximum. And uh, it's precocious as well. In three years, it's starting fruiting from seed. And I would like to show the tree. Yeah, it's not very clear on this photo, but just before it flowers, all the, 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 the leaves turn from green into a beautiful uh, red, pinkish, purple color. It's an spectacular tree. They use it also for planting as a street tree in Brazil or in different um, places, like, like in a square. This was taken in a, in a square in, in Brazil. So it's a tree that's very beautiful and give beautiful, delicious nuts. The nuts taste very close to 
uh, Brazil nuts or, or Paraná, Paraná nuts. They are very delicious. Next family. Uh, now the Acerola family, Malpigiaceae. Next slide. I have selected only one species from this is the, the Nance. The Nance is a popular fruit from Central America, but the yellow version, it's very popular there, especially in, in, I think in Mexico, Costa Rica as well. And uh, it's a yellow fruit. They love to make juices. It has a very particular taste. But this one, is one of the very few species of this big genus. This genus um, Bersonima has over 100 species, but only three or four have red, scarlet red fruits. And it's very important for human health because it's very rich in anthocyanins. I have um, and we had a little discussion about anthocyanins yesterday. So this one, it tastes like a crunchy green apple, more or less, but it's very good for using in juices because the seed is very hard, so you can just drop the washed fruits inside, add a little bit of water, uh, use the blender and the, the seeds will remain intact and the juice is deep red, very beautiful color. Next, I will change family again. We are going to the cacao family, Malvi Malvaceae. Um, next slide. Uh, the first one I will show you is Errania, Errania palensis. They call in Portuguese cacao jacaré means alligator cacao because the, the fruits have ribs that the, the people in Brazil think oh, it's like an alligator. Uh, the taste of the pulp is very, very nice, but uh, the commercial use for it farmers use in, in Brazil, they get the seeds together with the pulp Blend them with a little bit of water because the seeds are rich in theobromine, the same thing that's inside cacao, and make a, a very good jelly. Add a little bit of sugar and cook it, and it's fantastic taste. So you don't need to care to separate pulp from from the seeds. You just drop everything in a blender and then cook and make a delicious jelly. It's like a cacao jelly with nutty flavor. Next. Can they be grafted on cacao? Uh, on cacao, I never tried it, but it's a possibility because it's a very closely related genus. Someone has to try it. Uh, I want to show the flower. No, back, please, back. Still the same plant as before. The alligator cacao. Go back. Okay, he's trying. Okay, forward. Yes. Erania. Yeah, the one in the left, you see the red flowers? That's what I want to show. It's because it's a wonderful tree. And it's a very slender tree. It's, um, it's not more than two inches, a uh, very old tree. And uh, you can grow in pots. Actually, all uh, I grow some some of them in the field. This plant doesn't love much sun, direct sun. It has if you grow in the field, it has to be under the canopy of other trees. Otherwise, the, the leaves will get burned. And uh, the best results I, I I have with them are growing them in pots in a shaded area and they flower not long, maybe three or four years from seeds and they have beautiful flowers. The flowers are edible as well and people also use to prepare jellies with them. So you have a, both an ornamental and a fruit tree. Next slide. 
Yes, Balayas. The other is Maria, and Maria has big, big fruits. I think I choose the Balayas because it's more beautiful. Next. Okay, this I will talk about Patinoa Paraenses. People in Portuguese call it Cupurana. Cupurana because of Cupuaçu. The ones here in Hawaii that have seen uh, Cupuaçu already will think the shape and color resembles Cupuaçu. But the contrary to Cupuaçu that has a hard skin, this one has a leathery skin. It, its texture is soft and, and tough at the same time like, like uh, ox leather. And uh, to open, you just need to cut with a pair of scissors or a small knife. And the pulp is also attached to the fruit like cupuaçu. So the best way to take uh, to separate pulp from seeds is to use a pair of scissors. That's uh, how we do in Brazil for both cupuaçu and for cupurana. Cupurana, rana means false in Indian language. So this is false cupuaçu. And the taste is like genip, uh, not a very popular fruit in, in South America and South and Central America. Uh, you can use it for juice. It's, it has a strong taste and smell. Uh, some people like it out of hand, other people don't like it. So most of most people prepare some kinds of liquors and marmalades and juices, ice creams, then eating out of hand. Next. I think now you see some some cacao relatives. Yeah, this is the first one. Theobroma obovatum. Yes, you enlarge the fruit. This one they call vultures head because people think it's very bumpy and I don't know. Someone found it similar to a vulture's head. And the interesting about this species, besides its the excellent taste of the pulp, and there are also some references about the chocolate made from the seeds. I have never tasted, but the experts in chocolate preparation uh, should try. The, the interesting thing uh, I find of this species is that it can fruit in pots. Uh, so you don't need, it's not a, a big tree, it's a small one, and in a, in a four gallon, four or five gallon pot you can fruit it easily. Next. Then we'll talk about uh, Theobroma sylvestre. Uh, the fruit, this is an unripe fruit. When it's ripe, it gets a kind of, uh, kind of wax uh, over it that's, that's whitish. And so people call it blue cacao because it's whitish blue when ripe. And the taste from, from the pulp is excellent. It's not acid. Like cupuaçu, it's very sweet, and it uh, should also be ta uh, tested as uh, the seeds for for chocolate preparation. There is an old reference from the 1960s of um, a scientist named Quatre Casas that he recommends this as chocolate making. This is the blue cacao. Next. Okay, now we go into the Myrtaceae. This, uh, this was the family that I have focused, focused yesterday. And now we will talk about lots of species and genera. We will start with the Calyptrantes. Uh, is this, this fruit here. This fruit is a uh, new species to the, sci to the science. Uh, the story of this plant 
was that it has been discovered in a region in Amazon, north of Rio Trombetas. It's a left bank tributary of Rio Amazonas in 1913 by an old director of Rio Botanical Garden, Adolfo Duque. Of course, he's already dead. But uh, he, he was so amazed by this plant that he took some seedlings from the wild in the Amazon and planted in Rio de Janeiro Botanical Gardens. And what does it have of so special? Uh, it's very rich in the same substance uh, that gives the smell and flavor to licorice. Um, the name is an anito in, in Latin. So the substance is anetol. And uh, from the, the he wrote some notes, took uh, it when finding this plant, that the Indians used it to sweeten different beverages, like cupuaçu, for example. They, they use it to combine cupuaçu acid taste with the sweetness of this. Uh, wild licorice. Uh, imagine a licorice uh, plant that is related to guava, to jabuticaba, to Surinam cherry. And uh, it's a very small tree, it's a shrub that you can cultivate in pots. I would like to show the plant. Yes, the, the plant is not, this plant is already fruiting three or four years from seed, about two meters or less. And from the leaves, you can also use as a tea. The tea, people who like, like uh, uh, licorice will love the tea. Has the same taste. And uh, a friend of mine who is a chef, uh, she, pre she prepared um, a jelly with cacao seeds and sweetened it and with the, the leaves of this and it became excellent, excellent combination, chocolate and liquorice. Next. Now we go to the Campo Manisias. Uh, this, the one in the left is the one I have talked yesterday, Campo Manisia di Suta. I will not repeat the story I have told yesterday, but uh, just add that it's very good for cultivation because uh, in this genus, this species has the biggest fruits, uh, almost no seeds and the, the skin is very thin. So people using it for making marmalades and jellies and, and juices, uh, it's very product, productive. Uh, you probably have tried already the marmalade I have brought from this species. Next. Still in the Campomanisia genus, I want to show Campomanisia laurifolia. It's enlarged the, the fruit. The fruit of this species is in segments like mangosteen. Uh, it's nothing related to mangosteen, just has a skin that you break and then you have the segments, the sweet segments uh, around the small seeds. Next. Uh, another Campomanisa that's very promising is Lineatifolia, this one. Uh, also a big fruit uh, from 6 to 7 centimeters. Uh, this one uh, is very popular in Amazon region. Actually it was discovered first in Peru, but it also occurs in Brazil. And uh, surprisingly, uh, people from South Brazil in Porto Alegre, where it gets very cold in winter, uh, even near zero, this plant, in spite of being from Amazon, where the temperatures are much higher, uh, could survive very well. It's a very adaptable plant and the taste is excellent. Next. The next species is Campomanisia malifolia. Please enlarge. Uh, people call it black 
guabiroba is not so big fruit. The fruit is slightly more than two centimeters, but it, this was uh, the taste is very good. But this species was in risk of extinction. Um, it had been recently rediscovered by a researcher, uh, Professor Matos. And uh, this is from South Brazil. It can stand uh, low temperatures and uh, good taste. Next. This is Nary Flora. Please enlarge the fruits. The fruits are very bumpy and they have a surprising, surprising taste. They taste like lily koi, maracujá, passiflora. It's very, very unusual for a guabiroba tasting like, like lily koi. This one has a small fruit, but the flowers, I want to show the flowers now. The flowers are huge, very, very big. The leaves are already big and the flowers are huge. When it flowers, the, the tree is completely white with big, big flowers, almost the size of a hibiscus flower. Very beautiful species and delicious fruits uh, in spite of being small. The next one is Campomanisa fia, the flying saucer fruit. Oscar yesterday brought some fruits for display here. You should have seen. Uh, but Oscar has a cultivar without the pronounced kio that you can see in the, in the picture. This fruit uh, is used uh, mainly in Brazil for different uh, culinary preparations because to eat out of hand it's acid and a bit astringent but it's very popular uh, in, for ice cream uh, even some chefs say this is the best sorbet that means ice cream without milk in the world that's, it's, it was elected in a contest Next. I still have some of those fruits if anybody wants to try it. Yeah, if uh, Oscar will say something about it. I, I still have some of those fruits over there if anybody wants to try it after the talk is over. Just come over and I'll let you have one. Next slide. Uh, is the one in the, on the right, please? No, right. Uh, right page. Yes. This is Campomanesia schlechtendaliana. Some people are already growing it in the United States. It's a species of Campomanesia that lives close to the sea. It can get a little bit of salt spray. And the fruit tastes very good. The only thing is that, that the fruit is not very big. So, um, and they are tough enough to be, to be sold in markets in small plastic boxes like you sell blueberries or acerolas or something else. Next. Uh, the, I want to show Campomanesia Ceciliflora, please enlarge. Um, this just for display, I don't find it very promising, but it's just because its flower is similar to Super Guabiroba and botanists think they are the same species in spite of the, the fruits being completely different. And the botanists in this family say the flower is important. In Anonas they say it's not. You see? <laughs> That's botanists. Next. Okay, this is the Super Guabiroba. It's a species similar to Hisuta, but fruiting much faster and standing in much tougher conditions. And um, the taste is similar, the flower is different from Hisuta, and similar to Cecily Flora, like I showed before. This one is very promising too. And there is already a fruiting tree in Hawaii. Uh, Mr. Michael Olival, did he come here? Not this time. Yes, you have it fruiting already, right? Ours. Yes. Congratulations. Next. What's it called? What's it called? I didn't recognize Michael. He didn't use Bert a few years ago. 
now, now he's inspired by Bin Laden, I suppose. <laughs> okay, now we go to Eugenia. We talked first about Eugenia acutata. It's a rare species from Brazil, but the fruit for Eugenia has a good size, as you can see, it has about three centimeters. It has a loose seed inside, and uh, the skin is velvety, it's a little bit fuzzy, and tastes very sweet with no bitterness or uh, unpleasant taste. It's purely sweet, very, very nice and very promising species. The next one is Eugenia angustissima. The fruit is, is very sweet but very small as well. But uh, I have selected it because the plant is very beautiful and very unusual for Eugenia. Let's show the plant. Yeah, the plant, the, the leaves are, are very thin, they are needle shaped and it flowers like crazy as you can see in the picture. I want to show the leaf with the flower. Look, look at the leaves. It's amazing plant. It can be growing pots. In nature, it lives in, in rocky outcrops. So I bet it will love the, the stones, volcanic stones I have seen here in Hawaii. It doesn't like clay, it, it likes rocks. Next, and perfect drainage, of course. Then uh, I select Eugenia astringens that has been um, a several species that botanists merged in a, into a single. Some, uh, there was in the past several botanical names like Eugenia umbelliflora, Eugenia rotundifolia. Some of them taste very good, some taste terrible. But botanists say they are all the same. Next. Next one is a very promising one. This is Eugenia azeda. It, the taste is exactly like feijoa, acaciloiana. It sure has the same chemical compound on it. And uh, it's a close relative of Pitanga tuba, Eugenia celoi, that became a very popular um, fruit tree uh, around the world after our introduction about 15 years ago. And this species is the next, uh, is the candidate to be the next uh, Tanga tuba in the, among fruit growers. It didn't become popular yet because uh, it has a long juvenile uh, period. It starts in spite of starting uh, flowering early with two or three years, it takes five, four or five years more to the fruits to set. We are trying to study uh, how to, uh, to shorten this juvenile period, perhaps by hand pollinating, I don't know. Antonio Mosbaca has good ideas about it, we can discuss later. We will have some tables for discussions. We can discuss how to hand pollinate it. Next. Uh, this is Eugenia Borepairiana. This is uh, for the ones that know Uvaya, Eugenia piriformis or Eugenia uvaya. This uh, species with, whose fruit looks like one, but with a better taste, sweeter, and better aroma. And uh, my friend that in Spiritu Santo that make the marmalades, uh, he also is also making uh, jellies from this one. And uh, there was also for tasting outside the jelly of Eugenia Borepaiana. Next. Now I, I will talk about Eugenia candoliana. Uh, this is a species that's quite variable. Also, it has been in the past lots of different botanical names that the botanists merged into a single one. Okay, I will try to 
to go. And this is an improved variety. This species is very easy to grow and makes juices and jellies. Next. Eugenia copacabanensis is a rare species, very sweet, but the texture is not pleasant. Uh, it's it has fibers and a little bit grainy, but it's very sweet, so it's good for squeezing and juice. Next. We'll uh, uh, go skip uh, Involucrata because it's not so rare. Itaquaensis is du the dwarf Grubichama. Uh, it's a Grubichama that can fruit in only two or three years from seed. Show please the flowers and leaves. It differs from normal ruby chama because it has a very round leaf and no stem in the leaf. And it's very precocious, grow excellent for bonsai and pot. Okay, next. Uh, this is another kind of wild ruby chama not cultivated in the USA yet. Eugenia longi pedunculata also very precocious and promising. The flesh is white, unlike the other kinds of Rumichama. Next. Eugenia macrosperma. This species has a big fruit. The, the, the leaves are very beautiful. They, they, have, they are like golden velvet. And uh, they are sweet acid with a little bit uh, bitter after taste, so it's good for jellies. Next. Eugenia matosia is a small fruit and very sweet species, show the plant. But the plant, even very old, is only one meter high and, and like a bush. People use very much uh, as hedging or beside stairs and it, even in pots and bonsai. Next. No, no, next page. Yes. Oh, yes, this is the fuzzy groovy chama. Uh, if you want more details, go to my Facebook. Uh, it has a very an excellent texture. It's like peach inside, much superior than regular groovy chama. Next. Next page. Next page, please. Oh, come back. Uh, no, For, forward, forward, please. Go, go ahead. Next, Italia Tuba, people are already know. Next. Um, okay, Eugenia Sucata and large. This is uh, this is not a small, a big fruit here, but a cultivated one can grow to two centimeters. It looks, looks like uh, the regular Suriname cherry, but it has a crunchy taste, sweet, and no bitterness like the, the regular Suriname cherry has. It's very promising. Next. Yes, this I, I will do quickly. There are some kinds of Mirciaria. This is a uh, Guacchiaea. It's a relative of the yellow Jabuticaba with tiny, small seeds. So it's much better than the yellow Jabuticaba. Next. This one is another relative. This is uh, Mirciaria pilosa. It's very promising of, because of the color of the pole. People in its place of origin in northeastern Brazil, they use it for for seasoning. I don't know. It's um, inside inside sugar cane spirit. How do you call infusion? Yes, for infusion of sugar cane spirit. Next, uh, Mirciara strigipes is another relative of yellow jabuticaba but it has uh, some kind of citrus taste mixed in. It's very interesting as well. Next. Uh, back. Okay, uh, we go now to the Jabuticabas. I want to show of the white Jabuticaba the very best cultivar, that's Branca Mel. You have to change and look for it. 
Yes, oh, no, yes, this one. This is a very big one, as you can see, it has three centimeters di in diameter fruits. It's very sweet and small seeds, contrary to other varieties of Aureana. So it, this one is the very best. Next. Next page. Uh, previews. <laughs> Okay, this one is okay. Plinia grandifolia, it's a Jaboticaba living close to the sea. So people that have gardens very close to the sea, this is very promising. It's not as sweet as the other, it's not acid, but not the sweetest of all. But it has a good taste and has a reddish inner skin that's another good characteristic. Next. Um, in Plinia Jaboticaba, this is the, this includes Sabara. No, previous, previous Sabara. That's the commonest Jaboticaba here in Hawaii. Everybody should know it. But it has different varieties that may be new species. Next one. Now go go back. Yeah. What is the one? Yeah. Now go to Pingo de Mel. Yes. Yes, this one. This one is very promising in Brazil because it's much, it's even sweeter than Sabora and more adapted to dry conditions. It's uh, the, the one mostly planted uh, around Goiânia. I have talked about it yesterday. Very nice one. Next page. I will talk about Plinia fitranta. This enlarge, uh, yes, this is the typical variety. They have a ribbed skin, and this this species, several cultivars have been selected in Brazil. Go back to the small so people can see the names. Yes, change. Yeah, this is Ezalki, the one with very big fruits and leaves and reddish color. Next one. This is Jumbo, the one with largest fruits, next. And this is, uh, I will translate Rosa de Pescoço, is pink along the neck, because it has pink and has a little neck along. Next page. Uh, okay, Plinia Spiritus Santensis is a kind of fuzzy uh, Jaboticaba, has an excellent taste and a very interesting uh, fuzzy skin. Uh, the only advantage is that it's, it takes more than 10 years to start fruiting. It's very, very long juvenile period. Next. Yeah, Plinia truciflora is uh, the stem Jaboticaba. And large, please. This is the typical variety, but I want to show you another variety of it. Yes, this one. We call it Café Rajada. It's a big, very big fruit, over three centimeters in diameter, uh, extremely sweet, small seeds, and the only uh, handicap is because it takes seven to ten years to start fruiting, but it's a delicious fruit. Next page. Yes, I have selected only Psidium. This is a guava relative. This is Acutangulo from Amazon region. It makes the best flavored fruit. It's acid when eaten out of rent, but not as acid as the Costa Rica guava or Sartre.